like to um, invite Amanda Blackhorse from the Arizona Rally Against Stephen Mascot. And Amanda has been instrumental in this fight. And, and many of you may have seen her in the news and the media. She's taken on the Redskins. And I don't know if you should probably say that right. It's a dramatic term. <laughs> it's a bad word. But she has, she has led the fight, and, and um, so we're very honored to have her now. I'm going to ask you all to welcome her. Come on up. Good evening. Yes, and good evening. Thank you, E.P., for introducing me. Um, yes, and Shay, Amanda, my first day at the Shishman. Um, I am from the Navajo Nation, um, just north of here, and um, I am a mother, I am a social worker, and I'm also a plaintiff in this case, uh, pro football versus black first at all. Um, I want to thank the Green Party for inviting me um, our group here and also um, many indigenous um, advocates here um, who I have um, been just blessed to, to know um, throughout the years. I represent um, Arizona against uh, the Mascots. And um, our group, and we have some group members here as well, and we have some around. Um, our group has focused much of our work on educating the general public in Arizona, mostly, but also nationally, about the harmful effects of Native American mascots. We advocate for the elimination of Native mascots and the harmful imagery of indigenous people. But we also want to promote positive representation and empowerment for indigenous people, our cultures, and our identities. For myself, I've been involved in this over a 10 year long legal battle with the Washington NFL team. And it has been a very, very long process and an arduous one at times. Um, but what we're really doing with this case is we're attempting to eliminate the R word, which is the red skin word. Um, and I usually say that in you know, presentations just to explain what it is so that people know. But most of the time we say the R word um, to, so that we, we don't say the word. It's a dictionary defined religious word and has heinous origins. It came about at a time when the government and the, the colonial um, powers were attempting to exterminate the Native American population, the indigenous population. Um, and put bounties on the heads of indigenous people. They enlisted the population and said, can you help us eliminate the indigenous population? And so large sums of money were given to people to get scalps and body parts of indigenous people. And they called them redskins, um, or by their body parts. And this is not just something that, that came about in the world, you know, stories that were told, there's actual factual information out there in newspaper clippings, um, and posters that were put up asking for um, human flesh. And so we want to eliminate that term. We want to eliminate the symbol as well, the mascot of the Washington team. Because Native mascots and symbols and derogatory terms dehumanize indigenous people of today. We gain much momentum throughout the years with our struggle, and no matter the outcome of our ongoing legal battle now, we're still in a legal battle. We're in the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals in Virginia. We will continue to fight no matter what happens. We will continue to educate people to dispel myths of Native people and break down stereotypes, dismantling this billion dollar industry of Native mascots and Native cultural appropriation is vital to many Native issues. Because if Native people are only seen as stereotypes, as cartoons, as relics of the past, 
There will be little progress within our communities. Because we're seen as primitive people and as uh, cartoons, it's easy to dehumanize us. It's easy to destroy us and to get away with it. It's easy to poison our water, to mine our lands, to destroy our sacred sites, and to disregard our voice, our lawsuits, our leaders, and our spirituality. Our work is to humanize our people, not put a band-aid on racism. The struggle to dispel racism and the fight to protect our sacred spaces and sacred sites is rooted in respect and justice of the nation's people. Because we want to fight racism, we want to fight um, environmental racism. And it goes that to show, when we talk about environmental racism, the ability to build a pipeline through the indigenous territory, through the lifeline of Standing Rock, of the, of the Standing Rock tribe, the water, under the water, only because folks near the city of Bismarck, North Dakota, fear the negative environmental impacts. It shows you that that's environmental racism there. And the same thing goes here, and we'll probably hear more about it for 202, is that a complete disregard for the Aku community, just right here, right near us, in our own community. The, the Arizona Department of Transportation and the Federal Highway Administration completely ignore the voice in the current lawsuit that is happening. So when we talk about protecting sacred sites, we must remember that it is rooted in the humanization of indigenous people. And that is all I have. Thank you very much for coming.